Next is an author whose books you have no interest in reading. And my answer for this is men. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan, if you are new here. And today, I think this is my first ever tag that I've ever done. I may have done one, but I really think this is the first ever tag that I'm doing. We're gonna be talking about books I'm never gonna read. I'm never gonna read. This is the anti-TBR tag, and it was started by my favorite booktuber in the world. Like my favorite person, my favorite booktuber ever. It was started by Nicole and her books, who like, I just love Nicole so much. She is literally the most genuine person ever on booktube. I love her videos. I love her reading vlogs. She does some amazing themed reading vlogs. She's doing a series at the moment where she reads all of the books that she'd put on her TBRs throughout the month that she hasn't actually read, and I'm obsessed. And I just love her. So please go subscribe to her if you haven't already. So we're gonna be chatting about the books I'm never going to read. <laughs> Emma! <laughs> in my head, I was like, this is gonna be fine. This is gonna be easy. I choose the video, I sit down to plan it, and I struggle. I struggle. Because I apparently don't have negative feelings towards books very often. I'm quite an open person. I'll pretty much read anything. Because I do videos where I sometimes I'm not in control of what I read, or sometimes I know I'm gonna read like shitty books, I'll pretty much read anything. Reading's fun, reading's playful. I'm pretty much open to any book. Of course there are books I found when I was looking at this. Like I feel kind of ambivalent towards, like I have no great desire to read it. But there's not many books that I'm like, I am never reading that. I I'm never going to read that. Like, I'm, it's never happening. There's not many of them. I don't typically feel like that towards books. So this was actually a lot harder than I thought it would be. But let's just get into it, shall we? I've talked for long enough. So the first question is a popular book that everyone loves that you have no interest in reading. And for this, I'm going with Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. Now. I was not expecting that! I've never read any Sarah J Maas. And I know she's like booktube's darling, like everyone loves the gal. I do own A Court of Thorns and Roses. This was very kindly gifted to me by Charlotte like a year ago because I put it on there because I had a plan for a video with this and The Cruel Prince, which I don't know if it's, e it's ever gonna happen. Maybe I'll do it next month, maybe I'll never do it. I don't really know. I just think I have a slight interest in reading this series. I've heard so many good things about, is it A Court of Mist and Fury? I'm pretty sure it is. Look at me forgetting all my names. The level of unprofessionalism, far too much. And I'm vaguely interested in Throne of Glass. Like I'm vaguely interested in it. It could happen one day. I feel like I would actually prefer to read either this series or the Throne of Glass series before I read Crescent City. It just, it's so long, it's so long. And I'm really trying hard to not start series and like never finish them, cause that's a problem at the moment. So I'm really trying to tackle the series I've already started. I think this will probably be the first book I read by Sarah J Maas. And then I think I'll probably want to read the Throne of Glass series if I enjoy her stuff. So like this is just, years and years and years and years and years down the line. House of Earth and Blood, if I'm gonna read it, it'll be in 10 years. Like it will literally be that long away. It's not gonna happen before then. I know it's not because I just have too much to read before then. Actually, as you can see, I'm pretty booked and busy this month. Um, don't hit me up at all. As you can see, every fucking, I'm just busy every day. It's insane. That is my first answer, don't hate me. <laughs> Next is a classic book or author you don't have interest in reading. And classics are a hard one because I always say I want to read them. Like I want to read all the Jane Austen books, but like, when does it happen? <laughs> Never. <laughs> but an answer for this is Charles Dickens. So like, I have no interest in reading Hard Times, A Tale of Two Cities. What are his other ones? Oh yeah, David Copperfield. Like, I ain't vibing. Sounds lame as fuck. I'm not there. If I were to read any of his stuff, it would be like a Christmas Carol or maybe Oliver Twist. Like I did quite like the Oliver Twist film when I was younger, but that was only because it was on the same disc as Annie and I loved Annie. His stuff, like Great Expectations, oh my God, it just sounds so depressing. They're long, they're sad, they're bleak. And I just don't, like sometimes I just don't wanna do that. I do enjoy reading Victorian 
fiction. Like, for, like, modern historical Victorian fiction is kind of my vibe. His books just feel too intimidating to a point I'm scared of. Like, it's just, it's just never gonna happen. Because I am open to reading everything, it does feel painful to say this. Like, I do struggle saying never. But at the same time, it's never gonna be a priority for me. Like, it's never gonna be something I get around to. So, sorry, Charles Dickens. I know you probably don't care that I'm never gonna read your stuff, but I'm never gonna read your stuff. <laughs> Next is an author whose books you have no interest in reading. And my answer for this is men. <laughs> These white men are dangerous. Particularly fantasy male authors like Robert Jordan, Jim Butcher, even George R. R. Martin. Like, I don't want to read that. I, I don't. I realized when I did my favorite fantasy books of all time video, all of my favorite fantasy is written by women. I don't really vibe with fantasy written by men. I don't know why, but these books, like Robert Jordan's books, you know, Wheel of Time, like it's very rare I like a fantasy book written by a man. And I think often in these books, this is like a very broad stroke. Like I'm not actually accusing any of the authors I've mentioned of this, but I think these books are often sexist in their portrayal of women. I think women are often not important. And I just think, okay, this may, people might get angry at this, but I think that female authors of fantasy just create worlds that I prefer. The worlds feel more magical to me. Does that make sense? Like male fantasy often feels very brutal and harsh and like overwhelming. Whereas female fantasy authors I've read, it feels like whimsical and magical and like full of opportunity. And like, even when there's often a lot of difficulties, there's something magical in the dark magic and like the dark fantasy. I just, I just like women. <laughs> women. So I have no interest in reading like these classical acclaimed authors of fantasy that are men. Like I just don't. It's not gonna happen. So the next question is kind of similar to that but it's a problematic author you have no interest in reading and like my answer is any of them. <laughs> I'm not interested in reading any problematic authors really. It shocked me right? I don't know how accurate this is but I went on a list on Goodreads that said like most read books of 2020. Like 2020 releases that have been read the most. And American Dirt was third. And I think this is like an automatically generated list through statistics. And like, why are you all reading that? Like, why? I know it's not booktube people. Don't. Like, don't. Like, don't. Like, don't. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> I think that's so disturbing. That's like one of the most read books of this year. American Dirt can suck it. It was therapeutic for me. I don't regret it. There's so many better authors out there and authors we need to be uplifting more, like POC authors, trans authors, non-binary authors, gay authors. Like there's so many people out there who are not problematic who we need to be uplifting more than people who have been accused of being problematic. So my answer is all of them. Any problematic author, I ain't interested. <laughs> Next is an author you have read from a couple of times and have decided just they're not for you. I have a few answers for this. Number one is John Green. Now, this comes with a caveat. If John Green were to write an adult book or a new adult book, I'd read the shit out of it. I would read the shit out of that. Does that sound like something you want? Yes. Well, let me tell you, you'll never get it. I would love a John Green adult book. I would like, Oh my God, that is my dream. That is like my dream. So if that were to happen, oh my God, yeah. But I don't think I'm gonna be reading any more of his YA. I read them all, like I read all of his books when I was younger. Even then, I didn't love all of them. I liked some of them, but a lot of them I just thought were boring. I loved The Fault in Our Stars. And like, I genuinely will stand by this day. I think The Fault in Our Stars is well written. Like, I think it's good. I think there's a lot of imagery and allegory and like hidden meanings in that book people miss. So I will, I will stand by that. I mean, I haven't read it in years, but I will stand by that. But like an abundance of Catherines, who cares about her? Looking for Alaska, honestly, shit there's one oh paper towns shit remember that yeah. <laughs> trash and then this year i read turtles all the way down and i hated it i thought it was awful i thought it was so bad it was just like this weird ass romance that was going on i thought it was going to be a murder mystery or like a missing person mystery and i was like vibing with the idea of that and then it just wasn't that it was just like a romance and like a friendship thing but like the characters weren't even fleshed out it was bad but i think john green can write like i think he can really write so if he wrote an adult i'd be there first in line but i don't think he will do that i don't think i think he's scared i think he's scared <laughs> are you comfortable i'm scared are you scared yeah, I you should be 
And then another answer, this isn't one many people will know, but Sina Grace, the author of Ghosted in LA, comic book graphic novel series. I read the first four, I rated them three star, three star, three star, two star. They're like 25 pages each. I really wanted to love that series because they're 25 pages each and I can like rate, you know, read them quick for like Goodreads and stuff, like Goodreads reading goal. I remember I read the last one on a live last week that we did for the Thousand Doors Readathon and like, what? <laughs> what face did you just make, Megan? I missed it. I think I was very confused. I was like, <laughs> well, what even happened? Like, I, you know, when you read something and you're like, I didn't understand a single word of that. And there's images, like there's pic, this is pictures we're talking about here. And I didn't understand what was happening with the pictures. How is that possible? So I don't think I'm going to be reading any more of the Ghosted NLA series, sadly. I'm very sad about it. Now, the next question I actually have no answer for. So the next question is a genre you have no interest in or have tried and couldn't get into. I'll try anything. Like, I read any genre. There's not really a genre that I'm like, I ain't reading that. I've got into romance a bit more this year with Jack Harbin stuff. I'd read horror. Like, I don't read it that often, but I'll read it. I'll read sci-fi. I love sci-fi usually when I read it but it has to be a very specific form of sci-fi so there's not any genre I won't read like I'll read anything genuinely put anything in front of me and I'll read it the next question is a book you have bought but will never read and this is one I've actually unhauled but it is The Help by Catherine Stockett I mean I did buy it secondhand for like a pound at a used bookstore but then I just unhauled it because I didn't realize how problematic it is <laughs> it's set in like 1950s America from what I remember and is about black women working in rich women's homes and I just think it plays up on a lot of stereotypes of black women and it's written by a white woman I would recommend In Bad Feminist by Roxane Gay. She has a whole essay about the help and that was like a big reason as to why I realized it was problematic and like shit essentially. So I'd really recommend reading that book from Roxane Gay. She has a lot of interesting discussions about different kind of pop culture, films, books, music, etc that I found really interesting. So I'd really recommend that. Okay, I'm about to make some people mad. I'm about, I'm about to make some people mad. Do you see how that's incredibly offensive? Yes, I do. That's why I said it. The next question is a series you have no interest in reading or a series you started and DNF'd. I'm going to make Nicole upset <laughs> because my answers for these last few questions, she's not going to like it. She's not going to like it. And I, I'm sorry, Nicole, maybe you don't watch this far. My answer to this is Multiple Instruments by Cassandra Clare. I'm sorry that my behaviour has upset people and I've never intentionally um, set out to upset anyone. I have no interest in reading this. I've spoken about this before, but in secondary school, we had like an hour a week where we had to go into the library and read. And I would just like pick up books. Like I would just like pick up books and DNF them. I don't DNF now, but because it was a library book, I would just try something out. If I didn't like it, put it down. I started City of Bones. And I thought, what dog, dog shit is this? this? Not at the time knowing how popular Cassandra Clare is. I was like, this is awful. Like 11 year old me, <laughs> the book critic was like, this is not it. So I DNF'd it. Then when I came back onto booktube and reading and books years later, I was like, oh, everyone else likes this. Now, maybe if you scrape that tongue of yours and get that shit residue off of there, then maybe your taste buds would be alive and they could taste what's good and what's not for real. And like part of me is vaguely interested in reading some of her newer stuff. Like I'm vaguely interested in reading The Infernal Devices. I feel like I could like that. I don't know, Cassandra Clare has been accused of some kind of whack stuff. And that line I always see from The Mortal Instruments about like, you're my sister. I want to protect you from the guys who want to do exactly what I want to do to you. Like, what are we doing there? Like, why is that a line in one of the most popular young adult books on existence? Why are we all okay? I mean, I know we're not all okay with it, but why have we, why did we allow this to happen? <laughs> like, what? So I don't think I'll be reading this ever. Sorry about it. <laughs> and then the last is a new release, which you have no interest in reading. And I actually really struggled with this. New releases, I'm like, I can't read anything. But I have gone with, and this is like the fourth in a series, like it doesn't really count, but I have no interest 
in reading this series for years and years to come. And I'm saying Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. And Nicole hates it whenever I talk about Brandon Sanderson. And I'm sorry. Like, I'm really sorry. Sorry. <laughs> At least say it like you mean it. I will read some more Brandon Sanderson one day. Like his most popular stuff, I'll give it a go. But I didn't like Skyward. And I know it's very different from a lot of his other stuff, but I didn't enjoy this. So I don't think I'll be getting to the Stormlight archives or whatever it's called. Again, I won't be getting to that for like 10 years. So I have no qualms about saying I ain't reading Rhythm of War for like 20 years. <laughs> It's just not gonna happen. I'm sorry, Nicole, don't hate me. I probably will read some more Brandon Sanderson in the future. I'm interested in like watching a lot of his writing tips and writing lectures that he gives. I think he is a great writer because a lot of people love him, but like Rhythm of War, I, that doesn't have to be on my radar for another 15 years. Like I don't even have to think about it for another 15 years because I just won't get around to it. It won't happen. So that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the books I ain't ever gonna read or probably won't ever read or really have no interest in reading. Let me know what some of your answers are for some of these questions down below. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you very, very soon. Bye.